All right, just a quick little video on shaders. I was going to say CRT shaders, but they're not just for CRTs. But typically that's what people think of. It's a shader that will emulate the look of a CRT. And this is something we have in modern emulators. Uh, thanks to the extra horsepower on the computer side of things that we have nowadays to run these emulators. We also have higher resolution monitors, and that's also key. These shaders will work better with the more extra pixels they have to work with. So um, ideally, like on a 4K monitor or a 4K TV, this is going to look the best. I'm just showing this off on my 1440p monitor, so keep that in mind. could look even better. Um, these CRT shaders or shaders are something I've known about for a while. I just don't use them very often, mainly because I'm usually playing on real hardware. And, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm playing on a CRT, but most of the times I'm playing on, you know, my RetroTINK hooked up to my modern TV. And while that's not ideal in some instances, it works okay and it looks okay. And that's just how I prefer to play most of the time. I'm not usually playing in emulators like this. Um, especially on my main PC, which has the extra horsepower to do these shaders without slowing down the game. Alright, so first things first, we're going to load up Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This is in RetroArch. Uh, I forget what emulator I'm using, though. <laughs> what core I'm using. Um, but anyways, this is, this is the game running just, you know, stock. This is how RetroArch will scale it and look sharp, sharp pixels. And I don't mind that look for the most part, but if we go into shaders, load, these GL shaders, these are all like, I didn't have to download these separately. These are all pre-built, built in. So this is great. But we can see all these CRT shaders. The Royal ones are probably the most demanding, well, out of the popular ones that I've tried. Um, but this one emulates S-Video. So it's gonna still have some softness and uh, you know, color fringing maybe. It's not like emulating an RGB monitor. So this should look pretty cool. Let's take a look at this. And I'm going to show some close-ups. Um, basically taking a picture of my monitor with my camera. So again, this is a 1440p monitor. This could look even better on a 4K monitor. Eventually, if you get close enough, it becomes kind of hard to tell what the shader's doing versus what you're just seeing the raw pixels on my monitor. <laughs> but it's clear the shader's doing a lot. It's not just emulating... This isn't just scan lines, you know? We've had scan lines in emulators for a long time, and they're kind of a gimmick, a neat little feature at best, but basically just blanking out every other line of resolution, assuming your scaling is proper you can do that but you're gonna basically darken the image because you're just using half of your monitor's pixels at that point um, without getting any of the other realistic look of a CRT it's not just scan lines the scan lines have bloom to them and the bloom will get bigger the brighter that scan so as that scan line is going across the brighter it gets, the more bloom you're going to get, or the wider the scan line is going to look. That's just an example, and that's not even taking into effect. You may have like a shadow mask or an aperture grill, and that's going to affect the way the quote-unquote pixels that aren't really pixels are going to look. And so this is emulating the look of a CRT, and it's just so much more above and beyond scan lines. Let me show you some other ones here. Again, loading up the emulator. We got no shader on there. Just raw pixels, how it's going to look. And go into shaders. Going to go to load shader. And we're going to try another one. Another CRT shader. Um, but this is one that I've used before, and I, I like to use it once in a while. This is the, um, well, this is the consumer. Let's take a look at this one first. This is the consumer 
I don't know why this is supposed to look like a kind of like your average TV. It's maybe a cheaper TV. It's not a PVM, if you will, not a professional monitor. This is the average TV that you would have owned in the 90s. Um, this one's really aggressive on the giving you the like geometry of a CRT. It's kind of wrapping the, the edges around. And I don't know. I don't really like that. I think it's a little too aggressive. If it was subtle, I would probably like it. But I think it's a little too aggressive on here, as you can see where it says score and time. Uh, you know, the stuff in the corners getting wrapped around is a little too aggressive. But if we zoom in on this and we look at it up close, you can really see, again, there's a lot more going on here than just scan lines. They're trying to emulate somewhat of an aperture grill or a shadow mask, I guess, in this case. And the way it's blooming and blending the pixels together, it looks, it looks very convincing, I have to admit. These are really cool. Honestly, guys, if you have the extra horsepower to run these shaders, give them a try. There's a bunch here. You can try a bunch of different ones. I'm only showing the ones that I've used before. Um, but yeah, the next one I'm going to show you is the Aperture Grill. I think this is trying to emulate the higher-end Aperture Grill on like a Sony Trinitron, maybe a Sony Trinitron PVM. So I believe this is doing RGB now, so we're going to have less color bleeding, less fringing. But you can still see the scan lines. You can still see it's emulating, again, it's emulating the look of the aperture grill, which is going to affect the way the pixels or the sub-pixels, they're not even pixels, I know, on a CRT, the way the aperture grill, that's what it is, the way that it you know, breaks up the colors and uh, and gives you the, the sub-pixels, if you will. Again, very convincing looking, I have to admit. Even on this 1440p monitor, it's, con it's convincing. But on a 4K monitor, or if you're on a 4K TV, give this a try, because it's going to look amazing. All right, the last one I want to show you here is... Um, composite. So this is emulating composite. Uh, again, this is one of the royal ones. So it's a little more demanding. Uh, if you look at how many layers and um, passes this is doing, it's insane with some of these shaders. But look at this. You've got the pixel crawl emulated in there. Let's zoom in on this. I don't know if my camera, I'm just, again, I'm filming the screen with my phone, but the camera, I don't know how well this is going to pick it up. In video, the pixel crawl, the, what do you call it? You get the shimmering and the, you know, little pixel crawling around certain colors, certain colors kind of smearing together. Again, this is really impressive. It looks like you're on a shitty CRT with composite, <laughs> uh, composite, again, I always say comp, sometimes I say composite, sometimes I can say composite, deal with it, <laughs> but point is, it's very, very convincing, these are super cool, but you know what, they're not just for CRTs, well, what do you mean they're not just for, what if you want to emulate the look of an LCD, a specific LCD? Game Boy Color, for example. Look at this. Going to emulate some Game Boy Color. And again, by default, no shader on there, but we're going to go into shaders. But now we've got a different folder. We're not going to go into the CRT folder. We're going to go into the handheld folder. And look at all these different handheld LCD screens you can try to emulate. Now again, I haven't tried a lot of these, so I don't know if this one's the best. I'm just gonna pick one that says it's for Game Boy Color. We're playing a Game Boy Color game. And you can definitely see it's doing something to the image. It's got sort of those tall pixels and there's maybe more of uh, vertical scan lines on a Game Boy Color. Uh, colors are a little more muted. It's it's emulating how a Game Boy Color screen should look. So again, we'll zoom in, we'll take a look at this. 
again, I don't know how much of this is representative in the photo of the what the, the shader is doing versus at the at what point are we seeing the actual subpixels of my monitor? I've got my phone literally, you know, like half of a centimeter. I've got my phone literally a couple of millimeters off the screen, <laughs> right up in macro mode um, to see this. But you can clearly see it's doing something. And again, it has those kind of tall subpixels that the Game Boy Color screen has. So very cool. And again, I haven't really played around with a lot of these different hand handheld uh, screen emulation things, shaders. Um, there may be some cooler looking ones for, you know, GBA or I couldn't find one for the Game Gear. Maybe there are. There might be in a different folder, depending on, I don't know, who made the shader or you know, what they're classifying it as. But also, there might be more you can download than what you know comes out of the box. This, again, I didn't have to download these. These all come with um, RetroArch. So, anyways, guys, that is it. Um, again, I've only shown you some of the ones that I've used. They may not even be some of the best ones that are included. There's a lot in that list, and I haven't even tried... A quarter of them <laughs> so you might want to go through and just try different ones see how they look again the higher the resolution your monitor is the better these are going to look uh, if you're on a 4k monitor or a 4k tv check these out these are very very impressive it's amazing how far emulators have come <laughs> anyways see you guys later